Hello everyone, I'm Robin and welcome to part two of deploying Hubs Cloud on AWS. We have our domains for recipe one, we have our SSH key, and if you wanna follow along with the quick start guide, you are absolutely welcome to. So you're probably wondering, what is the difference between Hubs Cloud Personal and Enterprise? So the major difference is Hubs Cloud Personal, everything is running on that one server box, and for Enterprise, you can configure it for multiple. The other difference is the defaults in the stack template for personal are cost saving, and the ones for enterprise is for performance. Now, I'll point out those for you, so if you want to change them, you're welcome to. All right, so let's begin. Go on and click on Hubs Cloud Personal. So for this first page, we have a product overview, and if you scroll all the way down, you'll get some pricing information to learn more about how AWS bills for the EC2 instance, which is kind of the base cost. And this is billed hourly. Also, this is not the only place for a cost chart. We do have some in our documentation, so you don't need to keep visiting this particular page. The next page is the terms and conditions. I've already agreed to them, but please read through and agree. Then move on to the configuration. Now this page shows you where Hubs Cloud can be deployed to. Choose the region that is closest to you. Mine's Oregon, so that's the one that I picked. And we have the next action, which is launch cloud formation. And once that button turns orange, Please click it and looks good. Don't need to fill anything in, it's automatic. All right, we are ready to specify the parameters for our stack deployment. For stack name, I tend to use my main domain name dash and then a number to indicate what stack deploy I'm in because rollbacks do occasionally happen. Enter your first admin email address to your hub Make sure there are no typos and no capitalized letters. AWS will send you a verification email to double check that this is indeed your email address and you have to verify it in order to get into your admin panel. So for the domain name, I want to be extremely careful. So I have root 53 already open. Uh, double check that you don't have a transfer lock on. We want those both to be X's. I'm gonna copy and paste my main domain into this field so I don't make any typos. And yes, my domain is set up on root 53 because I bought it. If you are doing recipe number three in our domain recipes, you would be choosing number two. No. <laughs> so our domain recipes do indicate which ones you should choose. If you want to review that, you're welcome to. So for email configuration, um, as an example, this is what my emails will look like for my users logging into my Hubs Cloud instance with that magic link. Select the key pair that we made in the last video, the SSH one, and I like to choose the first one. This field indicates the instance size or server type that you will be deploying. AWS bills hourly. So each of these instance sizes do have a different cost associated with them. We have some excellent cost documentation to help you figure out which one suits your needs best. And if you find that you are on a too small instance during an event, you can easily update the stack live to up the instance size. So for cost management, we have a few options for you. The first one is a database budget with no less than $20 minimum is recommended. I tend to keep this zero. Uh, we also have offline mode that you can configure manually. I like to do this when I'm not using my server for a long period of time to save costs. You just pay for the storage costs for your backups with an optional offline redirect URL when your servers are offline. Remember to keep this online. <laughs> One of my favorite cost saving mechanisms is the auto pause database feature. So when people are not connecting to your instance for a long period of time, your database will turn off, which is pretty significant. The one downside is it will take a little bit more time to spin up, but you can turn this off when you have a live event or people are connecting. 
Let me scroll down here. It doesn't look like too much to change. Ah, SSL certificates. So if you were following recipe number three and said no in the above, you would be filling this out <laughs> in another tutorial. Okay, now press next. Next again and it's time to review all of the parameters. Now make sure that you have not made any typos in that admin email address, that everything looks good. Everything's correct. Ah, and double check that your stack is online. <laughs> Otherwise you won't be able to connect. Okay knowledge and then let's deploy. Now this process takes about 45 minutes and movie magic. It's finished. Haha. -ha. Create is complete. You'll notice in the bottom left corner that it is complete. We can now verify our email address with AWS so that we can access the admin console. And now it's time to spin up our server. <laughs> For the first time. If you get to this page, congrats, you have officially deployed your Hubs Cloud on AWS. Now it's time to sign in as an admin. So type in that admin email address that you just verified with AWS. And you'll notice the no reply with that email address that you specified and it's verifying via WebSocket. You can close this page, and if you refresh the page, you'll see that the admin settings dial is in the upper left. We click on that one, and now we are in the admin panel. That concludes part two, and in part three, we will be addressing all of these next steps. I will see you there.